welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Blasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine. I am your host, Christine Blasdale, and I am so excited about today's show because it is a topic that I am passionate about, and I I can say this uh, legitimately. I have probably one of the most world-renowned experts in the field of health and nutrition, so I'm very happy that you tuned in. Gary Knoll is my guest this hour, and In addition to being a renowned expert in health and nutrition, he's the author of over 70 best-selling books on healthy living and the director of over 100 critically acclaimed full-feature documentary films on natural health, self-empowerment, and the environment. He is the host of The Gary Knoll Show, the country's longest-running nationally syndicated health radio talk show, which can be heard daily on ProgressiveRadioNetwork.com. And if that wasn't enough, Gary has uh, created over 28 different television specials which have appeared on PBS stations throughout the country, inspiring and motivating millions of viewers. And we're going to be talking about health and wellness, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, but I'm so very happy to have on the show Mr. Gary Knoll. Welcome to Out of the Box, Gary. Thank you very much. I appreciate those kind words, Christine. And, you know, as we're, since we're in this um, transitional stage of the old year, coming into the new year, the holidays, this is a time when people are stressed, but also it's a time when people are eating all kinds of crazy crazy stuff. Let's talk about, and we're going to talk about one of your um, latest books that you have, Curing the Incurable, this cookbook. But let's talk about some of the the standard American diet or the SAD diet and the state of people in this country today. How is the health? What's How's the health of the average human being on in America today, Gary? Of all the developed nations, the United States is near the very bottom and the reason is simple, Edward Bernay, one person, Edward Bernay, the father of all propaganda and uh, public relations. He was the one who convinced people that you need something, not that you want it. He convinced people to change a want into a need. And yes, we should have a healthy breakfast, but he wanted you to have instead of a still-cut oatmeal or barley or rice or uh, the traditional dishes in many health-conscious countries, he wanted to have sugar-coated snacks and flakes and cow's milk and processed sugar on top of that and coffee with toast and margarine. Everything that we currently eat came from that 1940s to 1970s uh, propaganda campaign. And as a result today, you have people that in other areas of their life are extremely balanced and, and intelligent and successful. They've achieved uh, a measure of success, careerists, lawyers, doctors, engineers, architects, scientists, people who we look up to, who we frequently defer to because we figure they've spent more time and effort in their education than we maybe have in ours. And if they tell us we should do something, if it involves health, more often than not, we do it. What we don't do, and we, we are almost conditioned not to, is question the safety and veracity of what they're stating. If they tell us to get a vaccine, we get a vaccine. If they tell us we need 100 vaccines, we'll get 100 vaccines. One doctor says that a child could have, without a problem, 100,000 vaccines. Of course, by the 2,000 vaccine, the kid's already dead, but that's irrelevant. The, the logic is perfect. 
in fact, the logic for war, the logic for Yemen, the logic for Iraq, the logic for nuclear uh, arms, the uh, logic for genocide is perfect. And it's perfect in this sense. If you convince the public through your indoctrination that there will be a group of people throughout their life who will know more than they and should always be deferred to, and that's the key, deferred to authority figures, then the day comes that you no longer want to or even desire to know the truth independently. So you engage in what I call in the term intentional ignorance mm. and mm. intentional neglect. Intentional ignorance comes from intentional neglect. How can you know something if you're neglectful of it? Oh, that's not important. And then the day comes when we find out that cigarette smoking is bad, that alcohol in any amount is bad, that pesticides are bad, genetically engineered foods are bad, glyphosate is bad, and uh, spending too much time indoors is bad, that spending too much time on Facebook or these other internet mediums are bad. Having a cell phone to your head, and when you go to bed at night, putting it under your pillow is bad. And we think, wow. And then you look at your child, and your child today is in an epidemic of adult diabetes in children. Yes. You also have high numbers of children suffering from conditions such as heart disease, arthritis, and other pro-inflammatory conditions. And you think, well, how'd that happen? How did people who care about their children, and most people do, and care about their loved ones, and people do, how did we stray so far from reason and common sense? Well, it's simple. There's two selves. One is the authentic self, the life energy self, the spiritual self, the one that emotes, that has empathy, that is humanistic, that has compassion, that wants to share, that doesn't bully, doesn't brag, is not narcissistic, is not out there trying to gain at someone else's loss. But we're conditioned to be that frequently, not always. And then you have your epigenetic self. Epa, meaning larger. Genetic means our gene, which means the environment you're in. The people who are in that environment with you will directly impact the outcome of your genet- genetic expression. So the genome is completely susceptible to the quality of your diet. It will adversely affect turning on and off the aging switch. So if you want to age prematurely, if you want to get dead sooner, then eat a crappy American diet, the sad diet, standard American diet. And it's inevitable. The difference is what is not known as an exact is when will you have your heart attack, your stroke, your breast cancer, your ovarian cancer, your dementia, your arthritis, your bursitis. What point, what day, what hour will it happen? There's no science to predict that. But we do know that there are five things that keep you healthy longer. One is eating a plant-based healthy diet. There are over 2,000 studies on PubMed, and these are very good quality studies, including the nurses study and the doctor study, both over 40 years old now, following a group of nurses and physicians to see how they fare based on what they eat. And it, without exception, the higher the fiber up to about 50 grams a day, and the more unprocessed or whole foods, the longer you're going to live, the healthier you're going to be, the lower your cholesterol, the lower your, your triglycerides, the lower your C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of heart disease, and the, the lower your homocysteine level, which you won't hear it, you won't feel it, you won't even sense it. But when your homocysteine level goes at about 15 to 18 or 20, You've just put yourself at a high risk of a heart attack or stroke and don't even know it. Now, how can you get a high homocysteine? Well, eat the standard American diet, high in meat, high in dairy, and uh, high in processed foods, and not have enough vitamin C, B6, folic acid, and, and trimethylglycine, the nutrients that actually bring down your homocysteine level. Ironic, isn't it, that aspirin that a lot of people take, which they, in my opinion, should look at healthier alternatives to thin the blood, like vitamin C, thins the blood, onions, garlic, thin the blood, vitamin E, thins the blood, green juices like a green apple with celery and cucumber, thin the blood, not only with no harmful side effects, but flooding the body with chlorophyll, which helps chelate out heavy metals like cadmium, mercury, aluminum, that interfere in your neurological activity and contribute to the amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's. In any case, when you're having these standard American diet, we're having a lot of them. 
So quantity of food directly uh, impacts the gene. And there's a process called uh, uh, age. And the age stands for these combinations of protein, glycation, uh, which is proteins and sugar combined, and let's just say a, a sandwich, you know, a ham sandwich, a bologna sandwich, a, a hot dog, a hamburger, you're getting a refined carbohydrate, there's your sugar, yes. and you're getting meat, there's your protein. These two go in the stomach, and they create these advanced aging byproducts. Visualize it even simpler. Visualize a plump, moist chicken. You put it in the oven if you're a meat eater, and you bring it out two hours later, and it's crisp. That Christmas is not a good thing, and that's what happens to your cells. You actually take pliable, healthy cells, and you prematurely age them, and that's what the standard American diet. Soft drinks, high fructose corn syrup contribute to non-alcoholic liver, fatty liver disease. Almost 40% of the adult population suffer from it because we're consuming not fresh juices, orange juice, tomato juice, grapefruit juice, grape juice, apple juice, where instead we're having high fructose drinks. And these high fructose drinks play havoc with our body. And as long as our body is, is having these, we're going to suffer from defective liver. So everything you put in your body, every single item, including the quality of the water, there'll be an outcome. There is absolute proof of the outcome. But there's no proof of what date will be the tipping point. It will be the, the final straw that breaks the camel's back. It wasn't the first 10,000. No one's going to drink one glass of alcohol and end up with cirrhosis of the liver. No one's going to eat a hamburger and end up with a stroke. No one's going to end, eat some french fries and end up with obesity. But it's cumulative. Now, right. do that every day, right. and all those are going to happen. It's just you don't know when. And you can take about 10 years off your life from a faulty diet. Now, the second thing is, exercise. We can prove unequivocally that the older we get, the more important exercise is. And yet, historically, we've been told, take it easy, take it easy. (laughs) You know, know, you're not that age anymore. And I remember hearing people say, when my parents were 40, they should take it easy. Because 40, back when I was growing up as a kid, was considered old. Now, why was it old? Well, why was it old when you had people like Cicero and Seneca and uh, other great minds from the past who could live to be 80 and and 89 years old, if you're you're Michelangelo, and look how old the son is, the Declaration of Independence lived, Benjamin Franklin, for example, and uh, John Adams, almost 90 years of age. Why? Because they were always doing something. They were not sedentary. So the more sedentary you become, and you should never sit for more than two hours, beyond that it's dangerous to your venous blood flow, you're not getting the microcirculation of the brain extremities, and so we fail. And then kids don't like to exercise. They're spending more time not indoors uh, or outdoors playing, but indoors sitting. So exercise is crucial to keeping you healthier longer. And then the third thing is de-stressing. I interviewed the father of stress therapy, Hans Selye, and he was the one who told us that distress, meaning things that bother us, things that are out of our control that we can't handle, that actually ages us prematurely. It sends up a hormone cascade, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, catecholamines, and adrenaline, all of which are bad for us. They're only supposed to be there to help us when a fight-or-flight re- re- situation occurs, which is about a minute and a half to two minutes. But what if you just stay angry or fearful or stressed all the time? And most Americans are stressed all the time. And the more successful you become, the more stressed you're going to be because once you start up this mythical ladder of success as a careerist, no matter what you have, you'll never be happy. You need more. Or you're or afraid to lose it. Or right. Play. Right. So that stress is important. The, the fourth element is the quality of our beliefs. What do we believe in? Does our belief allow us to challenge it? Can we change? Can we surrender old knowledge and, and gain new knowledge? Are we open or are we so ultra-Orthodox in our views that where there's no, no place for us to 
be open and flexible and move and say, you know something, this might have worked for me at one time in my life, but it's sure not working today, so I'm going to give it up. We're not allowed to do that. We're always supposed to be absolutely adhering to principles that no longer work for us. Okay? So then we end up with views that long ago should have been surrendered because everything in life has an expiration date. But what happens when something we've been doing is expired in its meaningfulness and we're now just in mindless rituals instead of being fresh and new and seeking exciting and passionate new adventures in life? And the final thing is, and this is very important, is the epigenetics of our earlier conditioning. Do we have parents that wanted us? Do we have parents that loved us? Mm-hmm. Did we come from an environment where, as a sponge absorbing all that energy, do we absorb the right things? All five of those end up impacting how we age, how much disease we manifest, and which ones, or how we can prevent diseases and live a longer life. You know, and I, I had heard you um, say one day that there are no, um, these quote-unquote these things that we accept, society accepts. Oh, as you get older, you're you know you're supposed to have high blood pressure, or you're gonna have a heart attack, or you're gonna have Alzheimer's. That 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 is a belief system too. That is there is not backed up by any kind of science. Correct. Just just absolutely point on, Christine. There is no disease normal to the aging process. Now, understand it from a biochemical perspective, and I'll keep this easily understood. Let's just, for argument's sake, say that you have 75 trillion cells in your body. You have 10 times more bacteria. You have 75 trillion. Now, the cell has its own biological clocks. These are called telomeres. And the shorter they get, the faster you age. But when you exercise, they lengthen. You extend your lifespan. When you eat a good diet, they lengthen. When you're de-stressing, they lengthen. When you have quality, loving relationships, they lengthen. When you're in a healthy, clean environment, they lengthen. So everything that allows you to harmonize allows these telomeres to live longer and divide less, and hence you are less susceptible to the diseases of aging which we create. They're not a normal part of the cell. And the average person should be able to live in good health to about 110. Now, that's with our current science. That's by taking the nutrients like NAD and resveratrol and pycnogenol and L-carnosine and vitamin C and quercetin and vitamin E and tocotrienols and ubiquinol, a whole long list of nutrients that supplement the diet and supplement the juicing and that also adds about 10 years onto our life. But we're not doing that. We're doing just the opposite. We're eating bad foods that we're conditioned to like. And then when we get diseases because of those, we attribute it to the aging. They're not. These are pro-inflammatory conditions. And when you are living a healthy life, you don't have the inflammation. Now, those 75 trillion cells, they get an average of 10 thousand gene alterations per cell per day so here's the math 75 trillion times 10,000 that's how many times your body is adversely affected every 24 hours so if you want on a healthy plant-based diet and you're eating olives and having olive oil and coconut oil and flaxseed oil in the diet instead of the processed oils if you were to have a lot of high antioxidant, polyphenol-rich berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, uh, pomegranate, uh, tart cherries, monomorancy cherries, and uh, gooseberries, and acai berries, and, uh, and uh, wolfstein, and noni. These are all berries. The more berries you have, the longer your cell is going to be healthy because these actually have nutrients that repair damage inside the DNA. And then if you have your healthy vegetables, the really nutrient-dense vegetables like watercress, arugula, Swiss chard, dandelion greens, the sunflower sprouts, radish sprouts, daikon sprouts, the more sprouts you have, the more vegetables. Now you get to take it up five steps higher by juicing. 
So when you're juicing, you're saturating the body with 100% good chlorophyll and phytonutrients and antioxidants. Now, that prevents the cell from being attacked in inflammation. So you're turning off inflammation if it's there. You're preventing inflammation if it's not. You're repairing the DNA if it's been damaged. You're preventing the DNA if it hasn't been damaged. And so, therefore, two people, both 40 years of age, one using the standard American diet, living the standard American lifestyle and belief system, they're going to look much older, but more importantly, than someone who is eating a healthy diet and living a healthy lifestyle. But more importantly is the person who's living the standard American diet, their biological age, which determines how long you're going to live, is probably double that. Yeah. So they're not 40, they're 80. And But those of us who are older and chronologically, we're actually younger biologically. Their DNA tests you can take today determine your actual DNA age. And if people had that test and thought, oh, my God, I'm 27, but this shows I'm 51, yeah, you're smoking, you're doing dope, you're drinking, you're not exercising, you're stressed out, and gee whiz, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> of course, you're doing everything wrong. Right. You're throwing wood on the fire and wondering why you've got any flames in your house. The other person, on the other hand, who is 60, could be 40 based on the new biology because they're doing everything to prevent that aging. So that's how we come to grips with this, and that's, that's the uh, reversing and slowing down the aging process, and that's what this is about. It's, uh, yeah, and I've, I've actually, I've, I've met people, I have a, a dear friend who's in her mid-60s, and, and she has more vitality and energy and is healthier than, than people that are definitely half her age, and you know, even in their 20s because of the standard American diet. So um, I, I can see that on her. Uh, I had a question. Now, this sounds so crazy, but if, uh, let's say you're going to be, because this is um, about some of the most important foods um, that we can eat or drink if it's, an, you know, if, it's a, if it's a juice, what would you say are the, and I know there's so many, but if you had, like, if you were stuck on a deserted island and you could only have maybe three of the uh, the top most important foods or juice, what would they be, Gary? Gary Null? Where would you, if you had three, only three, to not to survive on necessarily, but that were the most important that you know of, that you cannot do without, that are going to uh, be the best for you, what would those three uh, foods be? Well, you would have to have a food that has high amino acid quality. Therefore, I would have a protein from vegetables. It could be split pea, hemp. It could be a non-genetic engineered soy, or it could be brown rice. All of those are outstanding proteins. So that covers the protein, because without that, you're going to lose muscle mass and uh, making enzymes and hormones that are necessary from the protein. And the pea protein Next, is easy. Fiber, is the pea protein easy to digest as well? Yeah, those all digest well because they're plant-based. Okay, gotcha. And they have their own enzymes built in. Gotcha. Okay. Then I would have fruit. Uh, uh, let's say probably the best berry would be uh, a wild blueberry. That would be at the top. There's several. Pomegranate and wild blueberry are about equal. They do a lot of good inside the body. And uh, elderberry is also one of the single most powerful healing berries you can take. And that gives you your polyphenols, your antioxidants, and your fiber. Then you would want a, a, a legume, and there are over, over a thousand varieties of legumes and beans, and I would select one. But, of course, then you're down. Now you got three, and you, know, you don't have any of your green vegetables. So I wouldn't say that you could do it with three. You'd be on a restrictive diet. And you need, you need your green vegetables. That's essential. What about celery juice? I love celery juice. I don't know um, if that would be if that would cover enough. Celery juice is good. It's good anti-inflammatory. It's good for losing extra body, um, uh, contained weight. It's an anti-diuretic. It's rich in potassium, and uh, so it's a good juice. It's, It's. But again, we live in a world we shouldn't restrict ourselves. We live in a world where we have variety. And in the diet, you must have variety. You must have a rainbow in each meal. I like that. Greens and yellows and purples and reds. I like that a lot. 
Um, you had mentioned elderberry, and I have only just recently um, come across elderberry as far as the benefits now. And I've, I've have, I'm, I have, I'm fighting a cold, if you can't tell. I, um, and I just the other day I got hit with whatever's going around, and I'll tell you, I did the um, the elderberry. Um, I did the capsules, and there's also a um, like a sort of like a cough syrup because it was a it was a cough. In, uh, in my chest and then the sinuses but um, I've been doing the elderberry and it actually made me feel a lot better and I have some other friends who are going through the same thing they're sick and it's dragging on dragging on is elderberry does, is there a quality about the elderberry as far as your immune system uh, boosting your immune system yes elderberry is known to boost the immune system it's also good for night vision it helps your eyes and but if you're having a cold or flu, there's a simple tonic, a natural tonic you could put together, and that would be start off with 12 ounces of juice, and you could use green apple and uh, celery and cucumber, to which you then add two ounces of lemon juice and two ounces of ginger juice. Then you add one teaspoon of bee propolis, also add 1,000 milligrams of olive leaf extract, 100 milligrams of echinacea, 100 milligrams of astragalus, and then put in like 10 drops of colloidal silver oh, and yes. wild oregano yeah. oil, 10 drops, vitamin C, about 2,000 milligrams, and quercetin, around 2,000 milligrams, and vitamin A, at about 5,000 units, excuse me, 25,000 units, and vitamin D3, 5,000 units. Now, you drink that down, and you've given your body and your immune system an enormous amount of power. Enormous. Well, the, the oregano oil, and I know the colloidal silver is, um, I don't know if that's for infection or not, but the oregano oil, um, from my understanding, it's an antibacterial, antifungal um, type of compound? It is, and you can't take it straight because it's too strong, but colloidal silver is... Ten times more powerful. Ah! It kills over. It kills over five hundred different bacteria and viruses. That's why I feel better when I do the colloidal silver spray for my sinuses. That's that's probably yes. also why. Because right now a lot of people are getting and traveling and things like that. When you're on planes, um, you're going to come into um, you're going to come into bugs. That's how it is with the traveling. Well, you're, you're, when you fly, you're on a petri dish. Yes. <laughs> and I know so you fly a lot. So over my nostrils every two hours, and I take everything I just told you, yeah. every two hours on a flight, I take that same formula. What do you do to your nostrils before you fly? I mean, when you're flying? I, I spray, I oh. spray colloidal silver into my nostrils. Brilliant. And but then you have how do you get the juice on on board? How do you sneak that in? I take it as a powder, and then I add the water, the mineral water I get from the plane. I make my own little. Uh, oh, powder. you're so clever! <laughs> you are so clever, folks. If you're just uh, if you're just joining in, if this is out of the box with Christine, and my guest is. Oh my goodness, the, uh, the the brilliant and renowned expert in all things health and nutrition, Mr. Gary Null. And you can find out more about Gary. Of course, you can go to his website, GaryNull.com. You can also, I encourage you to listen to his health radio talk show, The Gary Null Show, which is heard every single day on ProgressiveRadioNetwork.com. Now, Gary, um, one of the... Um, your latest books, because now you've you've had well over seventy. I think you've probably had close to a hundred um, uh, books and a hundred um, documentary films as well re relating to health and wellness. The latest one that you have, the title is "Curing the Incurable," and this is wonderful because this is a cookbook, right, for people. Because it's all great to talk about healthy foods you need you need to incorporate this in your life and and have more of that but most people they go okay Gary wh how do I get that you know um, how do I how do I how do I go and get that and it's all gonna taste like like a something out of a lawnmower I'm sure it's just gonna all taste like green lawnmower clippings that's not true and I know because you're an expert um, at coming up with these incredible recipes tell us about the book curing the incurable all right. Well, I 
opened the first gourmet vegan restaurant in American history, the Fertile Earth, back in 1970. It was very successful. It was up near Columbia University. The Berrigan brothers, all the people who were anti-war, would hang out there every night. And uh, I was exposing them to organic food, and I had the Fertile Earth Farm, which was the first food co-op upstate New York, where I taught organic farming. And I'd bring what I'd grow in both in indoors and outdoors back every day to New York City, and I was up to Stone Ridge, which is near New Paltz, and it was wonderful. And that went on for 10 years. And later people say, we love those recipes, and so I continue to do some additional cookbooks. And I decided with this cookbook to do something completely different, I mean radically different. I started off by interviewing an awful lot of board-certified physicians, most of whom the public has, has never heard of, and these are regular on neurologists, oncologists, cardiologists, gastroenterologists, etc. And they all had something in common. First, they all helped themselves with their own diets, a plant-based diet. And then they helped thousands of patients. And to give you an example, one of the people I interviewed in the book is Dr. Dean Ornich. And he was the first board-certified cardiologist to do a study published in a peer-reviewed journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, and later another study published in Lancet showing that you could reverse heart disease, clogging of the arteries, hardening of the arteries, arterial sclerosis, atherial sclerosis, by using diet, stress management, and, and um, exercise. And I filmed him 30-some years ago doing that. And so he had just finished reversing complete in-stage heart disease to where nine people were going to have to have a heart transplant, their whole heart taken out of their body, because they were so sick. Every one of those people reversed their heart disease and didn't have to have a single transplant because they were on his protocol. Wow. John McDougall, another great oh, yes. uh, uh, yeah. person, medical doctor, board certified, a vegan, and all these people were vegan, and he had his stories. And out in Arizona, uh, Dr. Gabriel Cousins um, so I went around America finding the best physicians who had hard, hard scientific proof that they reversed diseases in their patients. So their stories are the first section of the book. It's about 90 pages, just that first section. And then I realized a lot of people don't know where to start, Christine. They, they, where do I begin? Well, let's all begin by understanding which foods are alkalizing, which foods are acidifying, which are good, which are not good which have low glycemic index, which means that they're healthy because your blood sugar is not going to spike, and which have high glycemic index, which are not good, you're going to spike your blood sugar. So I have a whole section on understanding which foods to take if you want to turn off pain, which foods to consume in juices if you want to have more energy. So there's a whole big section to that. Then I got into understanding different health problems that we could rectify if we changed our diet. And then, finally, I get to the huge section of the book, over 300, I believe it's around 300 pages, of just beautiful photographs that look like they came out of Gourmet and Epicure magazines. These are pieces of our artwork, and they're all vegan. I've seen and them. Mind you, here's what's interesting. I had people who, A, do not like to cook, the don't cook, try these recipes. I gave them over 300. Of all 300 I gave them, 160 they were able to perfect with no background, no desire for cooking, which means that you do not have to be a David Boulay in order to do, uh, he's our America's Greatest Chef, in order to do great dishes. You can do these on your own. So now you'll be able to sit down to something that looks like a beautiful uh, gourmet meal it tastes wonderful. And it's and incredibly good for you. how to use <laughs> no sugar, desserts. And so this is, the, this is a wonderful new book. It's in e-books now, in the end of January, it'll be in, in, coming out in bound book form. It's the printer now. And it was done in the United States uh, using American labor, not made in China, uh, we planted a lot of trees in order to make this happen, used vegetable dyes instead of ink. So it's a very conscious book. It's a big book, and it's a big table quality size book. You put on, you know, like what we call a coffee table book. And the photographs are just 
luxurious, multicolored, and we brought in a great art director who laid it all out, and there's health tips throughout all the book. So this is the one and only book. And by the way, this book has won four outstanding cookbook awards, more than any other cookbook that I know of in the United States. And wow. I haven't even released it yet. It's just I, you, it's I, so brand new yeah. that we're just posting it up on our website this week. It's an e-book, and, uh, and the hardback edition we're giving early promotion to, it'll come out in about, oh, I guess, uh, seven weeks from now, uh, people will get it. And it took a year to do this. And this is all original recipes. It's stunning. And they're vegan, vegan, vegan and gluten-free, but more importantly, they're energizing recipes. So people who suffer from fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome, they need more energy. People who are aging need more energy. I kept that in mind. And this is the the cookbook, I use it all, our recipes, I use it all the retreats. And it's interesting because at these retreats, people are thinking, well, this is like going upstate New York to one of the ashrams and doing yoga. Great yoga and great meditation, but really bare food. Bad food. <laughs> like here's, here's, here's a clump of brown rice, here's a clump of some beans, here's a glass of apple juice, here's some seaweed, yeah. nothing on it, enjoy it. Yeah, right? and it costs... And, and oh, it, by the way, you're, we're going to give this to you three times a day. Exactly, and, so, it cost, and it cost, it'll cost you an arm and a leg as well. As well. And, and, and so at the retreats, I create gourmet meals, and no meal is the same. Every single meal... Is different, and when people see this coming out of the kitchen and placed in front of them, they want to take out their pictures, start taking, you know, cameras take pictures because they've never seen anything like this. You can't go to any restaurant in New York and see beautifully uh, plated, and plating is important. It's, it's making it a whole experience, you know, sumptuous, gourmet, tasty experience. And I, I give people a spectrum of how spicy they want to make it, We're using different herbs and seasonings for foods. So, and these are not expensive. The cookbook is not expensive. And so this is a wonderful treat to give someone. So if you want to give someone something that shows your love, you give them the gift of health. Yes. And this is a tool. Yes. I don't care if you're a billionaire or unemployed. I don't care if you're a Ph.D. and an M.D. or never been to school. We all need to be healthy. So this helps everyone, no matter what your age or circumstance, to make different meals and juices as well, but it shows you how to plate them and how to present them. So when I have someone over uh, for dinner and they see the meals being you know, served to them, it's like, ooh, ah, that wonderful expression when someone didn't expect this. So in my world, Christine, if you have a gift, you give a gift. Give more than what a person expects. Yes. Give a higher level of, of input. So when people say, well, I didn't expect this, it's because they're used to going out to some, you know, vegan restaurants and having something that tastes like, you know, uh, as you said, either grass or bark. Take your pick. Yeah. And they'll throw some sesame seeds on it and think, ooh, ah. <laughs> instead of making it the most delicious, beautiful, presented dishes imaginable, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, sauces, soups, salads, main entrees, it's all here in this wonderful Curing the Incurable Cookbook because what these doctors did, that an average doctor is not going to do, they actually reverse the disease in themselves and reverse the disease in their patients, and they've done it quietly. And so I just wanted to pay homage to these wonderful human beings nice. and bring their unique work the public's attention. So this is a book that could save lives. The cancer, arthritis, dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, heart disease, I believe, all everything's covered. So if you want to have something you're going to know is going to be real tools, curing the incurable cookbook is it, and it's the only place to get it. And the, the place to get it right now is at that GaryNull.com. You can go to GaryNull.com and get Curing the Incurable Cookbook, Healing Through Natural Foods. And I'm looking here. It's 219 delicious vegan, vegetarian, and raw food recipes. And the picture that I'm looking at right now is absolutely exquisite. It looks like it's almost like you don't want to eat it because it's just like a piece of art. But it is exquisite looking. So, again, it's Curing the Incurable Cookbook by Gary Null, and you can get that at GaryNull.com. 
Now, Gary, you had mentioned, you had um, said that at the retreats that you have, you actually, um, this kind of food is available to the guests, the people that come for these, what is it, about a week, uh, a week-long retreat? They actually get yes, to experience well, uh, this well, food. Once a year, I do a week retreat mm-hmm. because I can only counsel so many people in my office or by phone. But at the retreat, I have a chance to give lectures every night. Uh, people are counseled. If we have yoga and meditation and art is healing, sprouting classes, fermentation food classes, uh, classes on on every type of water aerobic, and if they have physical ailments, how to work with those. Um, they are given personal counseling by Luann Panessi, who is phenomenal at it. And uh, meditation, which is mindful meditation classes. And then people learn how to cook. People learn how to juice and which juices and why. And if you hear the testimonials, you'll hear people saying it changed their life. And I... it has. For those who come with a desire to change, this is the place to come and change. I have those. I have a few of those testimonials. So let's um, let's listen to just this is um, just a few people that have attended uh, uh, one of the most recent Gary Knowles retreats. Hi, this is Damien, and I've just completed a week's retreat with Gary. The main reason I came here was to go through a change, and that's what I've done. I, I accomplished what I came out here to do. Uh, the effect out here is very positive and it made the change that much easier to transition and it 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 was just so great if if you're not a vegan and you had any meal here you you would swear that it wasn't vegan it was so nutritious it it just everything was good every meal topped the previous one and and even the the first meal was great just walking around on the grounds has such a calming effect on your whole body mentally physically emotionally it's it's the right place to be whatever time you get here is going to be the right time i interviewed with luann to come here because she interviews everyone and she told me there was going to be work involved that was correct she told me the food was going to be great that was correct she told me the atmosphere was going to be very positive that was great what she didn't tell me was the incredible people that I was going to encounter when I came here. That was such a great surprise in such a good way. The people here were just incredible. It, 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 it was a benefit and a bonus I didn't think I was gonna get, but it was so great. What I'm gonna take home with me is that I'm going to uh, take the change that I started here and just continue it at home. And I know that will stay with me because it started here, the support that I had here will carry me when I get back home. And that, that, that's what I'm going to take with me. The change here started, and I'm just going to take, take it with me and complete it when I get back home. My name is Carol. I'm on my first retreat, and um, I came because of a very serious health challenge that I am facing, and uh, I am not the kind of person that gives up. I was very close, I think, to, uh, I don't want to say giving up, but not really knowing a direction that I thought could help me. And I have found a tremendous amount of help right here. I came here uh, not believing that I could walk a mile and a half, and now I know that I can walk much more than that. I know that I will get off this oxygen. In fact, I've been off of it for the last couple of days. I was unable to uh, climb stairs uh, at a reasonable pace, and now I can climb stairs normally and get there without uh, getting short of breath. Uh, Let's see what else is different. Oh, uh, Gary did some energy work on me the other day, and I discovered that I could not follow his meditative direction. I could not make the light go through me. However, in spite of that, 
the um, pain in my right side that um, I used to describe as, I used to describe myself as being the old shoe that was given to the teething puppy because I felt like I was just being chewed up and torn apart. There's no more biting. I still have pain, but that horrible pain is gone and has been for the, since he did that work. And um, I will be eternally grateful for that. It makes me want to go on. Um, and I made a list of things that I'm gonna take with me uh, to implement from this retreat. One, of course, is daily exercise. Number two is minimization of the psychobabble that comes from my TV, the dietary changes and adventures that I'm looking forward to with my uh, vegan, gluten, my gluten-free vegan diet. Um, I will not hold my tongue as much as I have in the past. I'm not going to pick up other people's crosses, um, but I will offer more empathy to those who are in pain. And the last thing, but the most important thing, is that I'm going to treat myself as the goddess that I am. Thank you, and thank you, Gary. Hi, my name is Bob. I live in New York State. Uh, when I came to Gary's retreat, I had had, had cancer in my kidney. Um, I, it was about three years ago. I never felt really well since then, and also felt a kind of trepidation and fear, a lack of purpose in life, a lack of direction. Spending one week here, uh, the energy is just unmeasurably high. Everything, everyone, every experience has been absolutely positive. I no longer feel that I have anything in terms of cancer. My outlook on life has completely changed. I have incredibly more energy. I feel a great purpose and a great peacefulness and a great sense of direction in what I want to do now and in the future. And I don't feel burdened anymore. And I'm sure I will have no problem carrying through. It's been a week that has changed my life. It's been an absolute 180 degrees change in direction. And I am very grateful to Gary, to the staff, and to all the fellow participants in the retreat because everyone was positive, everyone was great. And it's so refreshing to know that that kind of experience and that kind of spirit and that kind of energy exists. Hello, I'm KB. And I cannot put into words the amazing and wonderful experience here at Gary Knowles Retreat. I came here physically <sighs> debilitated and um, <sighs> today I feel 90% better. I'm able to do what I could not do before. I have participated in a race that I never imagined, imagined I would have been able to take part in. I would have never had the courage had I not come. I've learned so much, and now I want to be a viable part of my community as a result of the information I've gotten here. This is better than any vacation I could have ever taken anywhere in the world, and I've traveled the world. Now I know that life is about living, and I've learned how to do so here at this retreat. Thank you. And that was just a few of the, um, of the many, many people who have attended one of Gary Knoll's retreats. And Gary, you have one coming up very soon that people, if they're interested in, in attending, and experiencing what these people that we just heard, what they experienced, what they went through, but for their, their own selves, you have something coming up in January, correct? That's correct. And it's a beautiful environment. It's warm. Uh, and <laughs> yes. So people have a chance to rejuvenate, cleanse, detoxify, de-stress, especially if you have depression or anxiety problems. Being close to nature and letting nature help you in your journey of healing and health, that's important. Being around wonderful staff that come from all around the United States, 
who have been with me for decades at the facilitating that journey of health and healing. So give Luann Panessi a call because she speaks with each person to make sure that it's right for the person and not all, all the people who should come to this. But for those who can, it's, it's, it's a memorable experience. And it's a, and, it's and a great I, way to I kick off. I want to thank you for inviting me on today. I know that you're going to go, and you also have to talk with Luann on an upcoming event. So I want to thank you very much for this platform. Oh, my pleasure, Gary. And, and we'll have you back anytime, anytime you want to cover anything at all, especially in regards to health and, and wellness. So just I'm going to throw out the dates. It's January 13th to the 19th, and the retreat is in Florida the number to call is, uh, if you want to get more information, if you want to reserve your spot, it's 646-926-5428. That's 646-926-5428. And that is for the Gary Knoll Retreat. And for Gary Knoll's uh, book, the latest book, Curing the Incurable Cookbook, Healing Through Natural Foods, you can go to GaryKnoll.com. And just head over there anyway so you can find out all the great work that he's doing. And listen to his show, please, every single day on ProgressiveRadioNetwork.com. Gary Knoll, thank you so very much again for your time and all the work that you do for the, the, um, the healing and health that you're bringing back to so many people over these many decades. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye. January 13th to the 19th get more information if you want to reserve your spot it's 646-926-5428 all right listeners that's it for this week's out of the box radio make sure that you tune in next week and if you don't want to miss an episode you can subscribe to the podcast on itunes iHeartRadio, or better yet you can subscribe to the youtube channel out of the box radio and then when the show is posted there you can share it easily on your social media you can send the interview out in emails Uh, and get the, the word out about my guest and in particular about today's guest. Thanks again and see you next week. Until then, don't forget to always, always, always think out of the box. Bye for now.